Hi everyone, welcome back. Carrying on with homeostasis again today and looking at control of blood sugar. So we'll be looking at why do we need glucose in the first place? What has it ever done for me? Apart from tasting delicious, how does our blood, uh, how does our body stop blood sugar levels getting too high? And how does our body stop, uh, stop our blood sugar levels getting too low? The part about blood sugar levels getting low is higher tier only. So if you're doing foundation tier, I'll be doing this part last so you can stick around and find out if you want to but it's not going to come up in your actual exam so grab some paper grab some pens and follow along with me let's have a look at glucose then or as people like to call it sugar i have some delicious sugar here uh, i've i've promised i don't eat this much every day this we bought today and hopefully i'll make it last an hour, uh, two days, maybe. The point is, glucose is the main fuel for your body. So you do actually need sugar in your diet, but not too much, because you, you know, everything in moderation and all that. So glucose or sugar is what your body uses during respiration. Remember that chemical reaction that releases energy using oxygen. So without sugar, our bodies could not function, you would not live, but you can have too much of a good thing and this is where homeostasis controlling a constant internal environment kicks in and make sure your blood sugar levels are always like that goldilocks zone not too little not too much just right enough for all that beautiful respiration you need to do majority of our glucose comes from well food and also some from our drink so that comes into our bodies in the form of food can link back the idea that glucose comes from food and drink to our <clears throat> digestive system when you look to the organization topic so during digestion what's happening is the amylase enzymes remember are breaking down starch into smaller uh, particles of glucose so it's not just sugary foods thinking of your cake and your chocolate and your sweets it's also stuff that contains lots of carbs so starchy foods potato, pasta, etc. That's why often athletes will eat lots of starchy, carby foods the day before a, uh, a, a an event because it is getting a really good store of sugar ready for them to use during that, you know, intense physical activity. Often you'll find in exams they'll want you to make these cross-curricular links, especially if you're looking towards the latter end of the exam paper. So don't be surprised if you see a question that's about um, diabetes, which we'll look at in a future video, or about controlling glucose, and they also throw you a curveball and talk about people's diets. So we take that sugar that we've got during digestion, either from breaking down carbohydrates or from having food that has glucose or fructose in it directly, what will happen is that sugar will go from the small intestine through the intestinal wall into your capillaries and then off around your body. So different parts of your body will require more or less sugar depends on what they do so in places like your brain that have a lot of neurons and a lot of mitochondria they will require more that will require more energy for example than uh, just a, a cell in your skin that's just chilling there so <clears throat> your body is always trying to maintain a certain level of glucose in your blood that can meet demand so we're going to call this line our normal blood sugar Okay, so your blood sugar can go two ways. We're gonna start by looking at what happens when blood sugar gets too high. That's for foundation and higher tier. And then afterwards we'll look at what happens when blood sugar gets too low. So when you're inserting glucose into your system in the form of a, a delicious selection of uh, sugary sweets or just regular food, that's gonna cause your blood sugar levels to go up. So you eat your food, it gets broken down in your small intestine, that glucose gets deposited into your blood and your blood sugar levels start to go up. There is more sugar in your blood. <clears throat> what happens then is this causes our first organ to come into play, the pancreas. The pancreas will detect that that blood sugar level has got higher than normal and it will start triggering a chain of events.
So our little pancreas here has gone, oh my God, there's too much sugar in the blood. So we need to do something about this. So this will detect the change, almost like a receptor during a nervous response. So we've got our receptor, the pancreas, detecting the stimulus, the increase in blood sugar. What it will do then is it will then secrete, which is a lovely word, uh, it will secrete, give out insulin, which is our first hormone. Once the pancreas has released insulin, what that will do is cause cells in your body, mainly we're talking about in your liver and in your muscles, will start to take in that glucose and then convert it into something called glycogen, which is like a storage container. So think of the, the blood sugar being um, individual particles of, you know, individual granules of sugar uh, and the Glycogen is like the bag of sugar that you put in your cupboard because you don't always need all the sugar. You might want to put five sugars in your tea, but that's later. So you take your sugar and you put it away and that's the glycogen. So once those cells have taken in the glucose and turn it into glycogen, that's gonna cause the overall blood sugar levels to go back down to normal. Once it hits the normal, it will stop secreting insulin. So it, the glucose will remain level or something else will happen which will make it go back up. So going from the top, you have glucose is coming into your body in the form of food or drink that's getting broken down during digestion into glucose. So including stuff like carbohydrates, that will make your blood sugar level go up as it's deposited into your bloodstream in the small intestine. Then your pal, the pancreas, is gonna detect that the blood sugar levels has gone up and go, right, okay, I need to make some insulin now to bring that blood sugar level down. So it squirts out or secretes a load of insulin, it goes into your blood and this causes cells in your body, mainly in your liver and your muscles, to, to absorb, bring in that glucose to get out of the blood and then it turns it into glycogen and stores it. Remember, the glucose is like the individual grains of sugar in a bag, and the glycogen is like the bag of sugar you put in your cupboard. So, if you're doing foundation tier, that is as far as you need to know. You can stick around anyway, please do, uh, and learn about what happens when blood sugar levels go too low, but remember, you don't have to you know, lose sleep at not knowing it. I'd rather you concentrate on knowing what happens on this side than this side, but stick around, it's still pretty interesting. Okay, this time, blood sugar levels are gonna go down. Now we can't link this to food because food would contain more sugar to bring things up. So the main reason why your blood sugar levels are gonna go down is you're using it. And hopefully, if you think of what glucose might be used for in your body, you think about respiration. And because respiration is glucose, if you have glucose, you can carry out respiration, but it's gonna be used up. So the more respiration you do, the more exercise, the more energy you're using, the lower your blood sugar level's going to go. So this time my blood sugar level has gone down below the normal level. And again, our pal, good old PT the pancreas, so I'm gonna name him Pete, um, will spring forth into action. Uh, this time they're not gonna make insulin because that would be silly, it would make the blood sugar level go even further down. Uh, what it's gonna make this time is a different hormone called glucagon. Now, in science, we love to torture you and people make sure that all the names are so confusing. So you have glucose, glycogen, and glucagon. So glucagon gets released by the pancreas, and you can probably already guess, but this causes the opposite to happen. 
uh, that happened earlier. So where these cells were taking in glucose, they are releasing glucose because they're turning that glycogen short, they're getting that bag of sugar out the cupboard and converting some back into glucose to put your sugars in your tea. I just spotted something bad. This should say blood glucose decrease. Silly me. So run for it one more time. This time we're talking about blood sugar levels going down. So you're carrying out respiration, which uses up glucose. More respiration uses up more glucose. So that's gonna make your blood sugar level go down. Then good old Pete the pancreas is gonna say, oh God, there's now not enough sugar. What are you doing to me? And starts releasing glucagon. The glucagon triggers your cells, mainly in your muscles and in your liver to convert that glycogen store back into glucose. There's another bad thing and that converted back into glucose makes your blood sugar levels go back up. So your body will be sort of going between these two things depending on what you're doing with your day to day. You're more likely to be doing the one that involves insulin than this one here. And again, if you're doing high tier, you need to know everything. And if you're doing foundation tier, just the top. So the best way that I've found to learn this is to just write, down, write it down as I've got here. Pause the video, take as long as you need then flip a piece of paper over, over and try and do as much as you can from memory. You are not gonna remember it all, but if you take it one step at a time, so you remember some of the bits from the beginning, uh, but you can't remember any of this stuff over here, that's fine. So you just look back for a couple of seconds and try and add something in. Um, that way, if you do it a few times over the coming weeks or months, you will hopefully remember more and more and more of it. And when it comes to revision, you just need to focus on those key areas, those little details that you couldn't quite remember. That's us done for today. Be sure to check back soon for our video where we're gonna look at diabetes and taking this idea a bit further. But for now, just make sure again, go over your notes and I will see you all very soon.